It's sort of a new take on the New Testament story of the resurrection, but we wanted to do something completely different, so it's sort of the resurrection story told as a detective story. It's a Roman telling of the, of the crucifixion and the resurrection story, and, and, and really, you know, Christ's final days told through the eyes of agnostic Romans. I'd also describe it as the greatest murder mystery ever written. There is no greater kind of narrative than the mystery, the mystery of Christ. And, and what I love is that we, we embrace it, we accept it, we don't try to challenge or reinvent it. Kevin has done a brilliant job of honouring it, but through an original lens. Joe Fines was excellent for Clavius. He has a physical presence about him that Clavius had to have, but he also has a vulnerability to him that the character requires as well. Uh, because this guy's art takes him from being quite brutal but effective uh, Roman tribune, a soldier soldier, to a guy who starts to question his own beliefs and spirituality. And Joseph has that sort of range where he can, he can manifest all those things like Clavius, it would have been a virtue, I think, for a lot of people in that position to be ambitious. He certainly is longing to use this as a platform to get to the Senate and get to Rome and to get out of warfare, or at least the front line, which has served his life for 25 years. The apostles are quite a group, joyous beyond belief. It was like spending Christmas with 12 lunatics. They're the best. Thinking about Andrew, my character, what I love the most is what I think that the apostles had in common, that they were really innocent in a way. I love the, the way they, they see life. They don't have to believe in anything that, that they haven't seen. They've seen it. They have witnessed miracles. So it's a really understandable faith. I, I loved it. Like the aspect of a crime thriller in terms of Christianity was genius for me. It's showing humanity at its weakest and at its finest. You know, from Clavius' opening scenes to his latter scenes with Lucius, you see that how much faith can change a man and how much love can change a man. Sea of Galilee is sort of a turning point in the third act where um, our characters leave the city of Jerusalem and sort of go out in the countryside and where uh, you get in touch with nature. Playing the elements, playing the substance of the scene, the miraculous things that happened on that boat, pulling up the, the nets with the fish inside and having to react to that miraculous event was pretty special. Pretty inspiring because we had to work the boat, we had to live the boat, basically. We got a real understanding of what it would have been like and I think it will really serve the movie. Our film visits incredible, iconic moments. We shot the crucifixion scene under pretty cruel conditions. It was a very hot, humid day. And whether you're a believer or non-believer, you can't deny it is one of the most engaging narratives ever written. One of the problems with the character of Yeshua is that he doesn't really have a lot of scripted dialogue. And so we needed someone who could manifest the presence of Yeshua uh, without being able to do it verbally. And Cliff has a very intense process, and part of his process was to not talk to anyone for a long time. It did build something up inside of him that the, the Apostle characters responded to, and it comes across on the screen because people that have seen him in some of the scenes immediately talk about how powerful he is. I wanted this picture to appeal not just to the faithful, but also to people that may not be believers. The great thing is seeing it from a different point of view. Um, it's from Clavius' point of view, it's not from the disciples' point of view, it's not from Jesus' point of view, and it really puts a completely different twist on it. Because the stories are all sort of mythical and, and fantastical and, and they have so many miracles in them and so forth, we forget what it would actually have been like for a real person to, to have seen it. It kind of has a sort of massive twist at the end where you really start to see how powerful faith is and how something that you thought is true all your life can just turn on its on its head and it can change you forever. What frightens you? Being wrong. Wagering eternity on it.
Every time John Travolta is in the bathroom, in Pulp Fiction something bad happens. For this and more movie facts, click on more videos or click playlist for more trailers.